Well, we're taking our Bible and turning tonight for a text. I've been here at late, so I won't take a whole lot of time to deal with the text I'm reading tonight. It's Malachi chapter 3. If you want to turn with me and follow along in the scripture, and Malachi chapter 3 and verse number 16, and we'll read through verse 18, try to be have pretty brief as much as I can tonight, but don't hold me to it. But anyway, we will try, try, I tell you, I just uh, really don't feel up to, to being able to preach all that much tonight. But anyway, that'll be in the hands of the Lord. So you pray for us tonight. Father, we come to thank you for the great privilege, Lord, that you've afforded us on this Memorial Day weekend, on this Sunday evening. Lord, we're just thankful that we can meet with your people. Lord, few as we may be, Lord, in the house of God one more time. And Lord, you're looking on. Lord, you know uh, the hearts are here, what's upon our heart and our intent. And Lord, I pray you'll help us to be faithful, Lord, in a day of unfaithfulness. Lord, when it seems like a lot of folk have run out against, against the church and against old-time preaching, and Lord, we know we will not be in vain. Lord, we'll meet you again, Lord, in the judgment seat of Christ. Lord, for my part of preaching the word of God and truth, and for those that will have the opportunity to hear in this place and hear later the Lord willing, our response and reaction to the good word of God. And I pray you'll help us on this evening, Lord. I, can, I count it a privilege, Lord, to stand here one more time this side of your second coming. And I pray, Lord, you'll just overshadow us and undergird us and help us to speak clearly. And Lord, without fear or favor of man, and preach the truth of your word. To you be all honor and glory, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now I'm reading tonight from Malachi's account, Malachi chapter number 3 and verse 16 through verse 18. And really in all essence, and I'll introduce this, and I've probably done that before, but if by repetition and getting us started on this evening, Malachi is writing under inspiration of the Holy Ghost and one of the last prophets to uh, to, to restore Israel after the captivity, Babylonian captivity. And at this passage, of course, Malachi with its uh, four chapters is sending forth the love of Jehovah God himself uh, to his own people, Israel. And of course, in this, this, this book of Malachi, with its four chapters, is setting, uh, setting forth the sins of the, the people, uh, the Israel's backslidings, we must call it. And it's got in, in, embodied in these chapters the day of the Lord. Really, in all essence, when we look at Malachi chapter 3 and verse number 1, he gives us a, he gives us a, prediction of the first advent of our Lord Jesus when he mentions the forerunner of our Lord Jesus, which is John the Baptist. That's Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. And then he goes on to give a prediction of the second advent when the Lord shall return back to this earth when he, and when he brings up Elijah, Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. And of course, He's that prophet from the past and, and, and that uh, I will be one of those, uh, uh, the, the, those uh, two witnesses that will be killed in Jerusalem. Revelation chapter number 11. Amen. And so the burden of this prophet, and he's the messenger, he's the messenger, Malachi is, to the last of the prophets to a restored remnant as I've said, after the 70-year captivity. As I've said, he's seen, seen both advents of the Lord, the first advent when he brings up John the Baptist, and the second event when he brings up Elijah the great prophet of God. Now let's just read verse 16 and 18, and I'm trying try to be brief as I can tonight, and we'll try to bring this message that's on my heart. And he said in Malachi 3, verse 16, 
as he writes about this faithful remnant. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord, that's Jehovah, hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and them that thought upon his name. And I've done a little bit of study and haven't, haven't completed it, but books in the Bible are all important. The book of the law, which is the word of God that we read in the, the, the Psalms and, and the book of the living. That Psalm, I think chapter 69, the book of life, and that's the book of the living, really. And the book of the, the Lamb's book of life and the book of listed works. And so here uh, in my text, he talks about a book of remembrance and that's the reason I'm I'm using this text tonight because we're going to talk about God's role call of memorials and a memorial is really something or someone that keeps a remembrance alive and so we must take that in, in, in account on this evening as we look at God's roll call of memorials something or someone that keeps remembrance alive. And so here he's remembering, here a book of remembrance for this faithful remnant. And he said, which was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And he said, and they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day. And then he's talking about the day of the Lord when I make up my jewels and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him, then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. So with that passage on this evening, we're gonna talk about it just for a little time by the help and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ on this subject, God's roll call of memorials. And look at it in view of God's book of remembrance, his book of rewards. And God does faithfully reward those that serve him. And I'm, I'm reminding my heart again, and I've done that a lot of late, Hebrews 6, 9, and 10, Paul said in that verse, that God is not unfaithful uh, to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name in that you minister to the saints. Amen. And God, don't forget, God's got a, a memory. I'm tell, our memory is short and very limited, especially as you get older. But I'm glad we've got a God that remembers, a God that cannot and will not forget. Amen. And so we're going to talk about this uh, uh, God's rule call of memorials and do it in honor as we honor all those who have gave the ultimate sacrifice and in serving and in death for our country, taking in the military, the law enforcement, and of course, taking in our Lord Jesus. We do remember him, amen. We do call it a memorial to remember what the Lord has done for us in his redemptive work upon the cross. And I hope to see a little bit of that before we close tonight. And so I mentioned this morning this, and, and I'm getting it over again on this evening. While we, 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 while we contend for the faith, and that's what we do uh, in this place as, a, as me as a pastor and as you that support the church, we, we contend for the faith. That's what Jude wrote in, in the book of Jude in that, that little 20-something uh, verses uh, he, he was to write about the common salvation. And he said, it's more needful that me write unto you that you can earnestly contend for the faith, which was once delivered unto the saints. And, and of course, Jude went on to talk about apostasy and apostates and, 
I tell you, we're in that day when God's children need to take a stand. All the fight while standing, if it gets that way, I tell you, to contend for the great fundamentals of the faith. But while we're the church contending for the way, I tell you, we've got the military and the law enforcement that's out there contending for our freedoms. And think where we'd be if we didn't have faithful people that have have took on the the occupation like our son a uh, grandson Chad to to follow along to try to try to try to protect and and and, and keep people to, to doing the laws of the land but anyway contending for our freedoms and really when I think about the military and those that sacrifice and and the many that that were remembering this weekend that have given so much I tell you gave all to to, for the country gave their their life and we honor their memory on this evening but one of the things that give us a metaphor to real christian living is when we look at these people that serve our country a faithful and 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 i'll tell you go to to lynch to uh, to be a good soldier for the country and it gives us an incentive as a believer in christ to fight the good fight of faith to put on the whole armor of God to an endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And so we're seeing here, honoring all those that have given all. All gave some, but some gave all. And I want to look about it tonight and just be be as brief as I can. I got three points and don't have a whole lot of sub points with it this month, this evening. But we're looking at three things in God's roll call of memorials. And what I want to look at first is the memorials remembered by sayings and memorials remembered by stones and memorials remembered by scriptural accounts. Three, three subjects that I want to deal with tonight. And we'll take this first one tonight. And this is not, not scriptural, but we've got, got a lot of sayings and I've jotted it down. Memorials remembered by sayings. And so, here's some quotes we have. And sometimes a card or a party decor calls for an inspiring, heartwarming quote of remembrance. And this Memorial Day quotes pay respects to those servicemen and women and out of all armed services who have made the ultimate sacrifice while carrying the spirit of their legacy. And look at some of these quotes with me. May we never forget that freedom isn't free. In memory of many, in memory of all. We don't know them all, but we owe them all. Never forget ever honor fallen but not forgotten our flag doesn't fly because the wind moves it but because of the last breath of each soldier who died protecting it we come not to mourn our dead heroes but to praise them home of the free because of the brave we stand for the flag we kneel for the fallen and all gave some and some gave all remember them this memorial day death leaves a heartache no one can heal but love leaves a memory that no one can steal and so several sayings now connected with memorial day that i've jotted down saying and memorials remember amen and that's what we're in this house on this evening Given a tribute, given honor to those that have fallen, those that have died for our freedoms. Amen. And then I'm taking it on a second note, and we'll get in Scripture here just for a few minutes on this evening. Not only memorials by sins, but memorials remembered by stones. Now we have at least three cases, and I'm going to be limited in what I present on this evening. But we have three distinctive cases in a biblical perspective. Characters laying memorial stones and these become significant locations throughout biblical history. We're going to talk about Jacob at Bethel, Genesis 28. We're going to talk about Joshua at Gilgad. That's Joshua chapter 4 verse 1 through 8. 
And then we're going to mention Samuel. Amen. Samuel at Ebenezer. 1 Samuel 7, verse 7 through 12. Now let's just look at these for this second thought tonight. Not only have we seen memorials by sayings, but we're seeing memorials by stones. Stones that were set at the commemorate a commemorate a, a, a event or a, a person in scripture, a spiritual significance. Amen. And as we see Bethel is where Jacob memorized memorized his vision. And of course we're at Gilgal where Joshua commemorated the Israelites miraculous entrance in to the promised land and Samuel erecting a Ebenezer stone at Ebenezer uh, after God's tour of the Philistines attack. Now let's look at Genesis 28. Just a few minutes we'll back up to Genesis chapter 28 and kind of get along through this message tonight. But here's old Jacob, amen. And God's confirming to Jacob of the covenant that he made with Abraham and he did he did make that with Abraham Genesis 12 the Abrahamic covenant and of course he, he confirmed it with Isaac and now with Isaac's son Jacob he's confirming this covenant amen but in Genesis 28 and verse 3 and God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee that thou mayest be a multitude of people and give thee blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger which God gave unto Abraham. Amen. And so in really all essence, Genesis 28 is God's uh, uh, teaching Jacob. Amen. And I tell you, bringing to his remembrance how that God of the past had, uh, had spoken to Abraham and even to Isaac concerning this covenant. Amen. But here's where the Lord spake to Jacob. And here's where Jacob built an altar in Genesis 28. But we see his vision now. And we'll get a little bit about this uh, the stones. The stones that... Uh, at Bethel and Bethel, the word Bethel, Beth is for house and, and Bethel means the house of God. And so in Genesis 28 verse 10, and Jacob went out of Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of the place and put them for a pillow and lay down in that place to sleep. And here's Jacob now. He's went a long ways from home and he's, he's spending the night probably. As some preacher said, it might have been the first night he'd been away from home. And he's out there. And of course, uh, we've had the privilege to go by Bethel at one time on a road trip. And of course, he uh, just going so fast you couldn't hardly get a glimpse of Bethel. But it's just kind of a, a hillside along the way. And in this lonely place, Jacob is, uh, he's finding himself. And it said in verse 12, he dreamed and behold, a ladder set upon the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. Behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father and the God of Isaac and the land whereon thou liest to thee will I give it unto thy seed and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth and thou shalt spread abroad to the west to the east and to the north and to the south and thee shall uh, the seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed shall like the covenant God made with Abram in Genesis chapter 12 and in verse 15 and behold I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep and said, Surely the Lord's in this place, and I knew it not, and was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? There is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And it said in verse 18 now, we're getting to this stone. We're talking about memorials 
uh, remembered by stone. And it said that Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he'd made for his pillows and set it up a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of the place Bethel, but the name of the city was called Luz at the first. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me and as I go and give me bread and eat and ramen to put on so that I can come to again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which thou set for a pillar shall be that be God's house and all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give thee a tenth of all. And so as we read this account of Jacob at Bethel, amen, he memorializes his vision as he saw that ladder that reached all the way from earth to heaven. And God did speak to Jacob. He was a trickster and I tell you he was some some character of the past, but God dealt with and had to deal with him later. Amen. But I'm reminding you, thank God on that day. Amen. I tell you, out there in a lonely place called Bethel. Amen. And and of course uh, 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 of course uh, uh, Jacob called it the house of God. Amen. And here's where the Lord spoke to uh, spoke to Jacob. Here's where the Lord uh, tells us that Jacob made an altar to the Lord at Bethel. Amen. The house of God. Amen. And then we take our lesson on this evening as we look at memorials remembered by stone. And we talk about Joshua at Gilgal. Now look at it. It's in Joshua chapter 4 and we're just kind of getting along on this evening and seeing here that here Joshua commemorates the, the Israelitish miraculous entrance in to the promised land. Amen. And Moses has went off the scene and his successor, God's raised up Joshua to lead the people of Israel into the land of Cana. But in Joshua chapter 4 and verse 1 through 8, and it said it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over Jordan that the Lord spake unto Joshua saying, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe of man, and command them, saying, Take ye hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet I stood firm, twelve stones, and ye shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where thou shalt lodge this night. And Joshua called the twelve men, I mean, prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe of man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God in the midst of Jordan, and take you up every man, you a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. And this shall be a sign among you that when your children ask your fathers in time to come, saying, What meaneth these stone? Then shall ye answer them, that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the coming of the Lord. When thou passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be, notice, these stones shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. And so here at Gilgal, I'd hear Joshua, this great leader, and one with Caleb that are mentioned in this Bible. Thank God that uh, ever had a life that ever witnessed and had a God that never failed them. And on the list we could go about the greatness of Joshua and Caleb. Amen. And the same God that was with Moses. Moses said, uh, God said, I'm going to be with you, Joshua. Amen. And here it is. They're getting ready to cross the river of Jordan. And he told them to take 
twelve stones out and place them in the place where you lie and put twelve stones back in the place where the priest would step. Amen. As it crossed over Jordan and the twelve stones taken out would give us a typology foreshadowing the death of our Lord Jesus Christ crucified in death a, a dying for our sin and the twelve stones that would take out and place on the other side of uh, uh, other side of Jordan would commemorate and give a typology of the resurrection of our Lord foreshadowing the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and so stones in remember memorials in remembrance uh, by stones amen as 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 Joshua commemorate commemorates the Israelites miraculous entrance into the promised land. And he told them, he said, when the days come and your children are going to ask, what these stones you say, well, this is to memorize and to show you that God, the God, Almighty God that was with Israel and for Israel, I tell you, a, a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day, this this people that God led and fed and watched over them and, of course, led them across the Jordan on very dry ground. These stones to represent as a memorial that they crossed over Jordan on dry ground. The miraculous and mighty God of Israel. Amen. And so in Joshua uh, chapter 4, God commands the Israelites to cross the river of Jordan and he which he had stopped miraculously. And he leads the 12 tribes to remove the boulders or the, the stones that are in, in, in Jordan. Amen. And, and thank God to, to open up the way into the land of Canaan. Amen. And so in God's roll call of memorials, we looked at memorials remembered by, by sins and memorials remembered by stones. And one more uh, instant now, and we have it in 1 Samuel chapter 7. And look at it. And I'm just moving along to try to get finished tonight and hope you can move along with me as fast as I'm going on this evening. But we look at 1 Samuel, the great prophet, and I, I mentioned him recently, uh, little Hannah. She uh, prayed to God for a man, child, and she said, Lord, I'm going to make a vow. I'm going to give him to you all the days of his life. And, of course, Samuel comes on the scene, and miraculously born, really, in all essence. And, and Hannah's son, and she gives him to the Lord and made such a great prophet in Israel. But in 1 Samuel chapter 7, and we see here at Ebenezer, a stone is set. Amen. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm taking the time to thumb over there and read 1 Samuel chapter 7, and it's in verse number 7. If I can get my pages to cooperate tonight, and it said here, and when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered Together at Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And here was this sect of people, I tell you, was continually giving Israel problems. I'm telling you, them Philistine, all along the, uh, the Philistine country, uh, down below is below Jerusalem, I'm telling you, they were continually giving the people of Israel trouble. Even to this day, we must say, but here they're gathered and uh, together at Mizpah, and it said they drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on the day of on the day and said there we have sinned against the Lord and Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah. And when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together in Mizpah, and the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistine. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that we will, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistine. And it said that Samuel took a suckling lamb 
and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard it. Oh, what a great pro prophet of God that's here interceding for this people. When the Israelites have come up to trouble and, and to come against them, and Samuel was... And, and as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel, but the Lord. I like that, that Holy Ghost conjunction. Oh, while well, they've drawn near now to come and battle against this people, Israel, it said the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them, and they were smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and spoke and smote them until they came under Bethkar. And look at verse 12 now. We're looking at this memorial remembered by stone. And Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shem and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. And so the Philistines Philistines were subdued and they came no more into the coast of Israel and the hand of the Lord was against the Philistine all the days of Samuel. Amen. And so here was a memorial set up. Amen. Or well, as it depicted the Israelites under the imminent attack of the Philistine and God leads them to victory. Amen. As Samuel erects a large stone at Ebenezer and the name of that stone means the, the God of help. Amen. And I'm glad that God is our helper. God intervenes right on time when we need him. Amen. And our enemies may not be per se a Philistines and our enemy is the devil and, and all the courts of hell. But I'm glad just as, as Samuel prayed to God and cried out for Israel and God sent victory. I'm glad that you and I have more than Samuel. We've got a great high priest the Lord Jesus Christ and we can cry unto him we can lean upon him and learn of him and look to the Lord Jesus the author and finisher of our faith we don't have to go on in defeat we can ride this thing out in victory all the way home we don't have to be pushed aside by the enemy amen and so we've seen tonight three biblical characters laying more moral stones, amen. And then, and, and not only are we seeing memorials remembered by by sayings, as I've opened up this message in honor to those that have fought and, and paid the ultimate sacrifice and died for our freedom, but the memorials remembered by stone. And then we got this last one, memorials remembered by scriptural accounts. Now look at Exodus 12, and I'm doing my best to finish up tonight, but in Exodus chapter 12, and I'm going to be real brief to close this message, but here is Moses, amen, as this leader of the people of Israel, and God's made a I made a pronouncement that he's going to bring judgment in, in, in Exodus chapter number 12. He said, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to bring judgment. Uh, here it is in Exodus chapter number 12. And he said here in verse number 3, And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Move the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. And, and Moses now, he's going to tell the people, Thus saith the Lord, About midnight will I go into the midst of Egypt. And that's God's arrangement. See, he's pronouncing judgment on the firstborn in the land of Egypt. And, and, and it, it verses notice in and I'll get the verse right here in just a moment. But he said, the first, All the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sit upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the meal, and all the firstborn of beef. And he said, And there shall be a great cry throughout of the land of Egypt, such as was not like it, nor shall it be like it any more. 
but against all the children of Israel shall not a dog move a tongue against man or beast that they may know how the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. And it's not God showing favoritism or respect of people. I'm to, uh, but He's making a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. And so here He's called on this people now. Uh, he, 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 as He comes, uh, this people that now, he, what He's going to do now with this uh, Passover and the Passover feast as a memorial, he, He's commemorating Thank God their deliverance out of Egyptian bondage. Amen. That's what it's all about. And he calls for, for them to get a lamb, a selected lamb. Take of, in verse 1, verse 3 of Exodus 12, you shall take to them every man a lamb. Amen. According to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And this lamb had to be selected. It had to be a spotless lamb without blame. It had to be a specific lamb, a male of the first year. It had to be a suitable lamb. It had to be on the sheep or of the goat. It had to be a sanctified lamb. It was kept up. It had to be slain and killed and its blood shed. And that blood applied in five different places. Amen. And I jotted this down and I'm I'm looking at it. There was blood from the lamb. There was blood on the hyssop that the high priest would use to apply it to the doorpost in the lintel. There was blood in the basin, blood in the lintels, and blood on the side post. Amen. And all the significance when the Lord would pass through in judgment. Uh, he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And so in process of time, kindly getting a little bit further in this message tonight, what we're seeing here, these memorials remembered by scriptural accounts. Amen. And in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 14, and here Moses wrote, and this day shall be unto you for a memorial. There it is again, a memorial in scripture, a memorial to what took place at God have delivered this people out of Egyptian bondage, redeemed by the blood of the Passover lamb. This lamb and all it's required, all it said about this lamb, uh, speaks typically and foreshadows the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, thank God. As we see this passage tonight, a memorial to uh, the uh, person of our Lord Jesus, typically speaking, when we look at this Passover lamb. And of course, 1 Corinthians 5, 7 says for our lamb, our Passover lamb is sacrificed for us. And all this is pointing to the day when the Lord would come and on the old rugged cross would give himself the spotless lamb of God, this lamb that was selected and on the old rugged cross shed every drop of his precious blood, that that blood could be applied to our heart, that our judgment could be, that God would pass over judgment and condemnation to you and I that are in this house as saved on this evening. And so the Passover and the feast, uh, I tell you, we see a uh, commemorating the deliverance of uh, Israel out of Egyptian bondage. Amen. And then a memorial to, I say, to the Lord uh, in the Lord's death. Amen. And look at it now in 1 Corinthians 11. And I'm almost done and running away in time tonight. But look at 1 Corinthians 11. And I'll relay to this quickly before we close tonight. I'm seeing these memorials uh, 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 as we remember uh, memorials that remember the death of the Lord Jesus. But in, in, in 1 Corinthians 11, that's where we see this institution of the Lord's Supper or the Lord's Table. We don't call it the sacrament like Roman Catholicism does, but we, we call it the Lord's Table, the Lord's Supper. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and I'm, I'm try, trying to get there now, and this Bible said in 1 Corinthians 11, as, the, as Paul pins it down, and God to give him the revelation of this order of the Lord's table. 
And he said in verse number 23, For I received the Lord that which also was delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, and the same night which he was betrayed and took bread, betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. And I, I'm saying this is a memorial that we're to carry on. We don't do it because we don't have no deacons. We don't have enough people to carry on a, a, a ordinance of the church of the Lord's Supper. But we all have it in our heart. We believe it's right. We believe it's fit. We believe we ought to do it till he comes. And we're trying to do it a little bit some what tonight and limited I'm telling you, by the scripture but it should take and eat of this my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me and after the same manner also he took the cup and when he had supped this cup is a new testament in my blood this do as often as you drank it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drank this cup you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. And so my last thought on this evening and getting a little limited in the message, I'm saying a memorial to what Christ has done for us on the cross. And I'm telling you, we're not only memorizing and honor those fallen soldiers, men and women and all armed forces, even in law enforcement that have died, ultimately paid the price for our freedom, but we're honoring the person of our Lord Jesus. And every time we take bread and drink that cup, we do show the Lord's death till he comes in remembrance of him. And we don't do it for salvation. Not a, That's one of the ordinances of the church. We don't do it to be saved or stay saved. We do it because we are sick. We are blood bought. Amen. And we eat the bread which represents his body. And the, we drink the, the cup, amen, which represents his blood. All his body that he gave on the old rugged cross. Gave his all, I must say, that you and I could be saved and give his blood. Amen. Matthew 26 in closing and verse 28. And the Lord made this statement as he institutes the Lord's Supper. Matthew 26 and verse 8, 28. And the Lord said here in the Word of God, for this is my blood of the New Testament. That's another way of saying the New Covenant which is shed for you for the remission of sins. Amen. And back all the way in Moses' day with the Passover lamb. I'm telling you, we're reminded, we're seeing a foreshadow of the one that would come and did come. The lamb without blemish. Amen. It was a lamb for Adam and Eve, Genesis 321, the coats of skin, we call it, where God took a, and went out and killed an innocent lamb, shed the blood of that lamb, and, and took the skins of that lamb and clothed Adam and Eve, which speaks of the righteousness of God. And of course, in Exodus 12, it's a lamb for a nation. Amen. And when we come to John 129, it's a lamb for the world. John 129, John the Baptist rung out over the Judean hill and said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. But I'm glad when I read 1 Peter 1.18, through verse 20, it's a lamb for me, amen. A lamb for you on an individual basis. We are not redeemed by corruptible things as silver and gold received by tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot, who was verily for our name before the foundation of the world. And I'm glad on this day we can we can remember, amen, what the Lord's done for when you get get home and in this week read Psalm 76 and you'll see a, a the song, uh, the psalm of Asaph, it is, and as he writes about uh, his his doubt and his being overwhelmed, and and and, and I tell you, refusing to be comforted of God, and a whole list of the, his depressions and and his dis discouragement, but all he said, I will remember the works of the Lord. Amen. God's people can be 
I, I take I have a memorial on this day, a memorial of reminder, amen, to remind us how good and gracious the Lord is to us and what He's done for us. We're, we're way overdue of giving Him the praise and honor and the glory He is deserved. And we hold high the Lord Jesus on this day. We memorialize Him because of what He did for us in redemption. Amen. Father, 